Thank you. speaker of the evening is Jackie Walker. Um, Jackie was due to speak in Edinburgh last year at the uh, Episcopalian Church beside the castle. And uh, they phoned me. I'd made the booking and they phoned up and said, cancel. So I ran round to the in this business, hang on, I meet more religious people, I'm a determined atheist, but I'm hanging out with religious people all the time. I ran round to the Methodist church and made a booking there. Who is it? It's the Scottish Palestine Solidarity Campaign. I said, we wrote it down in the form and we made the booking and they phoned, they phoned back a few days later and said, we didn't know this was a campaigning meeting. <laughs> there was a clue there. There was a clue, and she was and she was cancelled again. So we didn't run any further, looking for other venues. We held a meeting on the steps of the Methodist Church in the dark and the gloom, and it was a very fine meeting. Um, but you know, this is getting absolutely preposterous. I know. I see some guys at the back who are also inside Brayhead Shopping Centre holding this placard, and. I spent three years in Glasgow Sheriff Court defending this placard at enormous expense to you. Yeah. Three years because this was a racist anti Semitic placard. And the Procurator Fiscal, in his intelligence, and he's an awesome figure, the Glasgow Procurator Fiscal, he said two weeks after Operation Protective Edge, 2,200 Palestinians slaughtered 551 children. We put a little blood symbol on it. It's not red here, but it's a blood symbol. To symbolise 2,200 Palestinians killed, 551 children. The ice cream fridges in Gaza were, had, were full of little bodies because the morgues were overflowing. So we thought blood, Palestinian blood is not water. The Procurator Fiscal said, when you carried that placard, the Palestinians, by the way, were never mentioned. What you were doing was alluding to a medieval blood libel against Jews. <laughs> that they kidnapped and killed Jew, uh, Christian children for their religious festivals in the Middle Ages. Now, I know some of the guys holding the placard weren't even aware of that medieval <laughs> life, right? It's madness! It's insanity! And I think Jackie Walker is the best person to, um, to look at the depths of that insanity. I just remembered, actually, that I spoke here almost at the beginning of what has been the most extraordinary journey for me, actually. So it's a really weird feeling because I feel I'm almost at the end of a particular journey. And I'm here and I'm thinking, you know, I'm a member of Jews for Justice for Palestinians and have been before Corbyn and uh, the Jewish Voice for Labour. And of course, at least for the next um, eight days, ten days or so, I remain a member of the the Labour Party, and opposed to what Sami Steen might tell you, I do have more than a drop of Jewish blood in me, talking about blood. And it's... Ex that darkness, do you not know how <laughs> Nazi he is? Uh, I mean, what, 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 is it, what is extraordinary is that this is one of the things, I mean, talking about abuse and slurs, Sami Steen tweeted to me, you don't even have a drop I can't do the Scottish accent properly. A drop <laughs> of Jewish blood in her, he said. And what's extraordinary about that, I haven't heard that kind of racist language spoken since I've read stuff from the Nazis. Mm -hmm. Now, how this man knows what my DNA is or what my parentage is, I didn't notice that he had been a member of my family, but I might be mistaken. But can I assure him... Not only am I Jewish enough to have a so-called, and I think we should call it so-called, a so-called right of return to a country that neither I nor generations of my family for thousands of years have ever been to. Not only do I have that right of return, but had I been in Nazi Germany, I would have been being sent along to those gas chambers because I'm certainly Jewish enough for Hitler to have wanted to incinerate me, which is what many of the Zionists have suggested should happen to me. And by that we have to beg the question, how much are these Zionists actually 
interested in defending Jews and Jewish life, and I'll come back to that later. And I'm really thinking about this march that's going on, that will be going on, and the fact that we have Zionists there who are going to be kind of, I don't know if they're going to be protected, I don't know if they're going to be defended, but they officially can be part of a march organised by the left. And I want that to sink into people, what that means. Because that is serious, and anybody who doesn't understand the seriousness of that, seriousness of that really needs to think about it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come back to all that. I'm building my answer. <laughs> because, of course, black lives matter, and, of course, Palestinian lives matter, because at the core of our struggle... As internationalists, you know that word, which is the left, we're not supposed to use anymore, socialists, because somebody has just told us, haven't they, from the Labour Party, that to be anti-capitalist is to be (laughs) anti-Jewish. How absolutely (laughs) dare a member of the parliamentary party make such a racist slur against those of us who happen to be both Jewish and anti-capitalist. And I would ask a question at a point in a week where Chris Williamson, within two hours of having been wanting to show a film, was actually suspended from the Labour Party. Where was the action by the Labour Party against this Labour a member of parliament who made the most breathtaking smear. I mean, just think of that again. That's what the Nazis used to say. They used to say, you know, capitalism is a Jewish conspiracy. And she's repeating that. Nobody seems to mind too much. Well, I mind and I mind hugely and I'm not going to be silenced in, in that. But I want us to think what has happened and how much things have gone on. The fact that we even feel the need to separate anti-Semitism from other forms of racism. I think we need to stop it. I think that's enough. And I agree with my black brother there that actually all racisms are unique. All racisms need to be fought against and all racisms come from the same root. And a lot of that root has to do with capitalism. So, the other thing I want to say is, where have we got to where somehow both Jews and Palestinians are exempted from this talk about race and racism in a different way, where, where in, 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 it, we are told that, that somehow we cannot speak about race in terms of Jews. We cannot speak about race in terms of Palestinians. The whole issue of the dialogue of race has now become so toxic that we can't actually even contemplate talking about it and making sense of it in terms of who we are and what we are in the anti-racist left. Netanyahu's recent statement, you know, I have to tell you, I've got a lot of admiration for uh, 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 Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, because, you know, he might be a liar and he might have defrauded and he might be a racist, But he's got an attachment to the truth in some things. And when he tells people, actually, (laughs) Israel is a state for Jews, thank you. He's telling us something really true. And that goes to the heart of this. Because Zionism is, and always has been, a racist ideology. So what the hell... called Stand Up to Racism doing, allowing a racist organisation to march with them. This is another seven. I'm going to talk um, a 
little bit about the anti semitism I don't know how much time we've got left, but I am going to talk a bit about what's happening with the anti-Semitism witch hunt. By the way, one of the charges against me in the Labour Party, which I'm taking very seriously, but I mean, I'm laughing, but I don't mean to laugh, really, is that I have called it a witch hunt. And that's how you know when you've got a witch hunt. Because if you call it a witch hunt, guess what happens? Now, the levels of the witch hunt in the Labour Party have reached obscene levels. Because apparently, if you call your leader a fucking anti-Semite, not only do you get to stay in the party, but you're protected within the party. Not only are you protected in the party, but for example, the other day, I had the stupidity because I've avoided it for a long time, being Jackie Walker at the moment. I had the stupidity to turn on Radio 4 and just listen to the news. And between 7 o'clock and 9 o'clock, Margaret Hodge was on the radio. Now, we've got climate change happening. We've got our hospitals falling to pieces. We've got people dying on the street. We've got Brexit, which I have to say is beginning to bore the tears out of me. But we have got some problems. But the BBC decided that the most important world news at that moment was not the fact that Israel was being condemned for war crimes because of the amount of children and journalists and unarmed civilians. Because I don't count throwing a stone as being a reason to be shot by a rifle that should be used for hunting and nothing better. So these are unarmed civilians. But the BBC decided that what was important was this woman who had actually called the leader a fucking anti-Semite and hadn't been suspended, that she should have her say three times at prime time news radio within two hours. But, you know, she's protected. But what you're not protected from in the Labour Party is if you dare to say that the problem, the issue of anti-Semitism has been weaponized, then you'll be thrown out. If you post something in support of Jackie Walker, you will risk being thrown out. If you retweet a, uh, a, 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 an article from Sky News, which has an excerpt from George Galloway, you will be thrown out. If you are a Jewish counsellor and you dare to make the most obscene joke, you know, due process, wow, that made me tremble in my boots for fear, you will be thrown out. So, I can happily say Jeremy Corbyn is a fucking anti semite and I would have kept my place in the Labour Party if only somebody had told me when the rules changed. Nobody told me that the rules had changed. I want to say something about this, this, this damn nonsense about anti-Semitism being like a virus, being like a disease. I hear the left talking this gibberish. Heaven help us, Owen Jones, every time he opens his mouth about anti-Semitism, he says, you know, he says, I, I can't do his accent, but I know it's from the normal. He says, anti-Semitism is like a virus. No, it's not. <laughs> or he says, anti-Semitism is like a cancer. No, it isn't. <laughs> it is nothing like a cancer. Because anti-Semitism, just like any form of racism, is something you learn. And you learn that because of the conditions within your society. And if we actually take on this idea that anti-Semitism is a virus, then what we're saying is it's all around us and it can never ever be defeated. That's what we're saying. And for people on the left to take that on, which is basically 
something that the Zionists started as an idea so that Jews would feel so terrified that they would want their own homeland, wherever it was going to be. I mean, actually, originally, it wasn't going to be in Palestine, and I'm sorry about that, because it was going to be in Uganda. Mind you, I have to say, people in Africa must have thought, thank God for that, at least, you know, it's gone over to the Middle East. It's not a virus at all. But can I tell you what's actually happening to Jews within the Labour Party? I want to tell you about the anti-Semitism that's happening against Jews in the Labour Party because it's serious. Yeah? Jews are having their lives threatened. They're having threatening phone calls. Jews are having bomb threats in their meetings. They're being assaulted in the street. I was talking, and I won't name her totally, to a younger than me Jewish woman who had just been suspended and because the Labour Party had leaked her data in the same way that they leaked my data, in the same way that they leaked Asa Win Stanley's data, very conveniently it seems, always in the same direction to the Jewish Chronicle, she had received so many death threats she was scared to go outside her house. I condemn the Labour Party for the, this anti-Semitism. I condemn the Labour Party for the fact that this anti-Semitism is so rife that they have banned the film called Witch Hunt from Parliament. This is anti-Semitism. Not only is it anti-Semitism, but don't really get me started on anti-black racism within the Labour Party. anti-Muslim racism within the Labour Party, which has actually seen this last year the lowest number of BAME candidates, that doesn't include Jews, when they say BAME candidates, by the way, the lowest ever number of BAME candidates selected for winnable seats. The lowest ever and I would suggest to you that part of the effects of what's happening with this anti-Semitism witch hunt, which I'm not allowed to call a witch hunt, is our best candidates of colour, our best candidates who are Muslims, have actually lost their places as candidates. There's a real problem on the left with racism. And thank you very much, by the way, for hosting this unison, because I'm now going to start on the trades unions. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that the situation in Scotland is not as toxic as what we have in England, because I want to tell you what's happening there as well. Not only is Witch Hunt the only film that has ever been banned in Parliament, a message went out to all trades union offices in England, saying they were not to show the film, saying they were not to have meetings about anti-Semitism or the issue that surrounds it, the witch hunt, at all. At the same point, when the same message went around constituency Labour parties, at the same point that momentum started to scan every Momentum page and actually phoned up Momentum locally groups, Momentum groups, and, and asked them to take down any Facebook posting that was in any way supportive of Jackie Walker. And that is the level of the witch hunt that is not a witch hunt but there's a film called The Witch Hunt that's been witch hunted out of Parliament. Because what actually Zionism does is it doesn't just, I mean it does, of course, it doesn't just persecute and oppress and commit acts of genocide against Palestinian people. It is actually 
inflamed and destroyed the ability for many in the Jewish community to speak out. It denies diversity within the Jewish community. It, it, it denies the diversity of culture that there is within the, the community. And therefore, Zionism is a, is a, it's a, it, it, it wants a monoculture, not just within Israel itself, but within Judaism. So I'm just going to, just two more minutes to just tell you something more about what a number of us are beginning to think of. There is some talk now about organising some kind of pushback on this. I understand the criticisms of Jeremy Corbyn. I do. And I think Jeremy has made some fundamental mistakes. But I also think, I suspect, that he is now aware of those mistakes. But others around him who hold the power and are holding the gags are now more in control than he is in this process. And I think what this coup is doing, because that's what it is, this is now a coup by the Parliamentary Labour Party against the members. Let's be clear on that. And what this coup is doing is gagging the membership and splitting Jeremy Corbyn off from what was his foundation of, of power, which is to the membership. And yes, of course, why it's so effective is because of the fact that it's linked to racism. And as good leftists, as internationalists, we are really aware of how fundamental anti-racism is to our practice. So many of us, a number of people have been talking about a pushback group. And I think, I hope that you'll soon see that coming out and coming together. It's going to be called Hands Off the Left. And it's going to be actually trying to provide people with actual information. And I think it's also going to be, hopefully in the future, developing an anti-racist arm. Because as far as I can see, every single anti-racist organisation has now been corrupted. Hope Not Hate, I mean, oh my God. I mean, Hope Not Hate gives me a headache. I mean, I can't even think about Hope Not Hate. And now we see Stand Up to Racism, not Standing Up to Racism. Yeah. I mean, that's what somebody needs to do. Stand Up to Racism, not, you know, because... And why are they doing it? They're doing it because they're scared of being called anti semite Absolutely. Well, I have to inform you guys, as soon as you've done that, you might as well pack up your bags and mm. go away. Yeah, it's sure. job done. Yeah. You are finished. Yeah. So what a number of us are thinking is that it is time that we started an anti-racist organisation that was specifically anti-Zionist. Yeah. Yes. And I think I'm hoping that that will work. Say something about what we have gained through a period of the most extraordinary pressures against us, through a period of regular defeat. Because I want you to understand that you are now sitting here, most of you, I hope, all now honorary black people. It's happened to you without you even noticing, because you've just gone through a period where you've been silenced where you've been abused, where things have been said about you and against you, which you know are untrue, where you have been excluded, where you have been witch hunted, where you have been smeared. And that's your little dose as to what it feels like to be part of an oppressed minority. And what is happening with that, I hope, is some of you are taking that and you are learning how to put together your practice as anti-racist with the actual feeling, the visceral feeling of what it is 
to feel the oppression of the establishment. And just understand the difference for you than for me is that when you walk out of the door, you're still a white person. Whereas for me and for other people in this room, when we walk out of the door, we are still an oppressed minority. So actually what's happened in these last few years, and I couldn't have done this, so thank you to all those offensive, unpleasant, racist Zionists that are out there. You have raised the level of awareness for what your strategies are and what true political pond life you are to levels I could never have dreamed of. So I thank you for that. And we need to take that awareness and really do something with it. Two dates I'm going to give to you now. My hearing is on the 26th and 27th of March. I'm absolutely sure that the Labour Party will bring to that hearing all the justice, all the fairness, all the attention to history, all the attention to evidence, all the anti-racist practice we have seen in the last few years to judge me. I am sure all of that will happen. But what, what as well I want you all to do is on the 17th of March is the online premiere of the film Witch Hunt. It's actually going to be shown in Edinburgh tomorrow evening and I will be there and speaking about it and all that. But on the 17th, it goes online. Go on it, see it, talk about it, share it. Share it in particular with Zionists, right? It's on a particular time or... Um, can I just say at the moment, if I just tell you from what I know, it's going to be embedded within Electronic Intifada. It, it will stay online at this point. And, and what I know about it, because it happened with The Telegraph this week, you know all those people who are saying, oh, not watch it because it's, it's, it's got Jackie Walker in it, and it's oh, like that. <laughs> they're going to be in their toilets, and they're going to be watching it. <laughs> and it's going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of people. And it's going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of people because people like you yeah. are going to share it, and talk about it, and send it to your friends, and send it to your enemies. Solidarity.